master the art of debugging javascript in lwc with essential tools tips and techniques for flawless components and seamless user experience welcome everyone in today's session we are going to talk about debugging javascript code in lwc so without wasting any time further let's proceed with the video Now first things first why debugging is important and to understand that let's first understand what is debugging now the process of finding out the bugs finding out the issues and then resolving those issues in code is known as debugging and the importance in LWC is to ensure components work as intended because it helps to maintain code quality and provide a better user experience now debugging is to find out the issues in the code and resolving that issues if i talk about lwc lightning web components are individual components or even collection of many components so debugging over there will make sure that those individual components are doing their job as expected not only that debugging code helps to maintain the quality in the code and gives a better user experience to the end user now some common issues in javascript are syntax errors logical errors runtime errors or even api failures now debugging helps us to find out the root cause of the issue in any of these issues now key debugging tools for javascript in lwc so one of them is console logging now with the help of console.log console.error or console.warn we can provide messages on our browser specifically on the console screen now these types of messages are not accessed by the user they are basically accessed by the developer to actually find out what is happening behind now debugger statement is another way in which we can perform debugging in javascript now these debugger statements pause the execution which helps us to inspect variables on the console screen and of course we will use browser dev tools now i always prefer to use chrome web browser because it is completely feasible and compatible for all the new lwc features as well but if you are using other web browsers then you have a developer tools over there as well so throughout our course we are going to use chrome dev tools now whichsoever dev tools you are using you will have certain panels and tabs under that dev tool it can be network tab to know the functionality and response of the network or elements panel to know individual elements over there on the page or console tab to see those console logging messages now using console.log effectively now the basic syntax of using console.log is simpler you will write console.log and then after you will have a pair of parentheses in which you can write down any message you can also bind some variables over here by using message along with a variable so a string for message comma and another parameter as a variable so that will be printed alongside you can even concatenate string over there so this is basically useful when we want to quickly check any specific value of the variable or to which specific line of code the code is getting executed successfully so this is basically handy for simple debugging for advanced console methods we have console.warn console.error or console.info now definitely we can use any one of them but there is one common mistake that we generally commit when we are dealing with logs that is using logs in your production so that is one of the common mistake that we generally commit over using console logs and that too in production code so in production code we generally try to omit the console logs until unless there is no other way than just to logging it now the debugger statement now debugger statement is nothing but a statement which is written in the code and as soon as that specific statement is executed it pauses the code execution in the dev tool so it is just like adding a breakpoint in your code the benefits of using a debugger statement is it allows us to inspect variables evaluate expressions and view the call stack the use case of debugger statement is to stop execution in complex functions and now the browser dev tools 
Now browser dev tools is actually a tool provided by browser basically to perform various type of development related stuff. One of the panel inside the dev tool is elements panel which is to inspect and edit HTML or CSS code while you are working with LWC. You have console panel over there where you can view logs, errors or warnings. You have sources panel where you can inspect and debug JavaScript file. There is a network panel which is to monitor network requests, responses and timings. And finally there is an application panel which is to manage local storage, cookies and session data. Now before we proceed ahead and start using these tools, let me introduce you towards these tools and show you how it works. Okay guys, so here we are on our VS code and you can see here I have created a folder debugging JS and inside that I have created debugging intro.html. You can see I am just including debugging intro.js inside it and nothing else. And inside debugging intro.js I have included few statements like I declared a variable with a value 10 and the name variable itself. And then I am having all the console statements like console log, console info, console war and console error. Now I have printed these statements twice but at first I printed them that time I am passing variable as a second parameter and here I am concatenating the variable to the message. Now let's see what is the output of this for that I will come to the HTML and click on go live from the bottom. Here's my output now let me show them side by side. Now to check out the output because it is coming on the console I have to open the browser dev tool. Now to open the browser dev tool you can come to the browser you can right click on it and click on inspect. We were doing it a lot of time. So the tool that opens after clicking on inspect is nothing but a browser dev tool. So I am clicking here clicking on inspect and here you go. Now let me show you the complete browser dev tools but before that let me show you the output of it. So the output of it will come on the console so you can click on console and here you can see the output. Now let me refresh the page and now you can see the output again. Now what I am doing is I am commenting out the last four saving it and now you can see the four output over here. So console.log and console.info they give the output almost similar there is no difference between them though console.war is used to show the warning and console.error is used to show the error. Now let me uncomment where I have concatenated the variables and save. So here you can see the output is almost similar. The only difference is the amount of space when we are concatenating it will just give the same space that we have given over here. But if we are adding it as the second parameter then the amount of space will be more. Now that's how we use console logs. Now let's check out how to work with the debugger state. But before that let's see the browser dev tools. Now right now you can see the browser dev tools but if you see it is showing on the right side of the browser. You can even show this at the bottom as well. To do that you can come to this options button and from here you can select your dock side. Now I am selecting dock side as dock to bottom and now you see your browser dev tool is coming at the bottom. Now let me show you the complete browser dev tool by maximizing the screen. Now these are all the options that you get in your browser dev tool. The first one is elements which shows all the elements of your page. The second one is console where you can see actually the warnings, the errors or any other logs. The source shows you the HTML and JavaScript file and, and this is the place where you will be actually debugging your JavaScript. Network section is basically used when we are making callouts to the external systems. So what is the response of the call, how the request went, all those informations comes under the network section. Now among all this most of most of our time will spend on the sources or it will spend on the console. Now I have already showed you how you can see the console over here. Let me use the debugger and show you the output over there. So guys in the same file I made a few changes what I did here is I created a calculate function with three parameters. Now inside that calculate function I am calling another function complex calculation which is passing those three parameters to it. And this complex calculation is doing nothing but accepting those three values and calculating its average and returning it. This returning average will come here in the result and then after if you see I have used the debugger statement. So this will do what it will pause the program over here pause the program exactly over this specific place and then after it will return the result. Now this returning result will come here where I am calling the calculate function so I am holding let res and finally showing the res. So I have saved this. Now let me show you what is the output of it. 
Now as you can see when I save this file, the browser is not showing me anything. Now what is the reason? To understand that you need to come to sources. Now on the sources if you see it is showing here debugger paused, right? And it is showing a yellow highlight over here on the debugger. And also it is showing plenty of values over there. Right now it is showing A is equals to 10, B is equals to 20, C is equals to 30, which is the value that you pass to by calling the calculate function. Then after complex calculation is also returning result as 20. So that is also showing over here because of that specific debugger. If I will double click on any specific variable and hover my mouse over there, still it will tell me the value of it. And on the right side of this debugger, you can see the scope, which is telling me the scope of this at that specific point, also the values of different variables. So this is the way where you can use debugger that will actually stop your program execution. You can come to your source and then on the source, you can actually see the values of different variables at that moment of time. Inspecting variables and expressions in DevTools. Now, viewing variables is hovering over variables to see the values. Like right now, I told you. You can hover your mouse on the variable to check out what is the value of that specific variable. You can use watches panel. So there is a panel over there, watches. So you can use watches panel where you can add expression to track their values as you are debugging. You can use call stack, which actually shows you the sequence of function calls that led to the current point. And the practical example of it is actually pausing with debugger and inspect variables in an LWC component to understand state changes. So basically, whatsoever I'm doing right now with JavaScript, you can do the exactly same thing with LWC over there on your browser by using the same tools that I'm showing right now. Okay guys, so I'm back to the browser itself, to so the same program. Now here, if you see, there is a watch window and there is a call stack window. Now call stack window can clearly show you that right now you are on calculate function. Now from this function, if you will go to some other function, you can certainly know how the function call have been made. Now the watch panel can be used to see the values of any specific expression at that time. For example, if I click on this plus for now, I can add the different values that are available over here. For example, I want to see what is the result of A multiplied by B divided by result and enter so it is clearly telling me 10 because a multiplied by b will be 20 into 10 that will be 200 divided by result which is 20 itself so 200 divided by 20 will be 10 itself so you can create your own expressions and you will see the result of it as soon as your program will proceed ahead now watch call stack will make more sense when we will understand breakpoints using breakpoints. Now breakpoints is another way in which we can pause the program in between just like we use the debugger. So setting breakpoint actually pause our program. But there are different types of breakpoints that you can add. One of them is line breakpoints. So you can click the line number in DevTools itself and that will add a breakpoint over there. You can also add conditional breakpoints like in that specific situation the execution will stop only when the specific condition is met and if the condition is not met it will not stop there. So how to add a conditional breakpoint? All that you need to do is to right click line number and add conditional breakpoint. Now the use case of having a conditional breakpoint is it avoids pausing code unnecessarily. So it will pause the code only when you want it to get paused by adding that specific condition. So let's quickly check it out in the VS code. Okay guys, so here is our code. Now what I'm doing here is I'm removing this debugger. So after removing the debugger, the program will not pause anywhere. Okay, so let me refresh this. Now there is no debugger and you can see on the console, you will see the output 20 over here program even didn't stop. Now let me add breakpoint over here without using debugger. For that, all that I need to do is to come to that specific line and click. So as soon as I clicked here, this will become a breakpoint. So let me refresh. So you see, program stopped here on the breakpoint itself. Now when you will add a breakpoint, what you will see is your program stops there. You can see the output of the values. Right now I am not able to see the output on result because I stopped here. I added breakpoint over here only. But instead of that, if I would have added here and refreshed, then definitely I can check out the value of result as well. So you can simply add line breakpoints like that. Similarly, if I want to add line breakpoint over here and line breakpoint over here at both the places and refresh it, 
So right now you can see in the call stack it is telling you the call stack from anonymous you called calculate from calculate you called complex calculation and right now you are in complex calculation. In the watch you are not getting any result because right now there is no result variable. So you will get the result of it only when you will be back to the calculate. So just click on this F9 or step step again and here you can see you are coming here back to calculate. Now when you are back to calculate now it, this is giving you the result desired result but this is how you add a breakpoint. Now every time I will refresh it, it both the breakpoints will meet and first this breakpoint will be caught. Okay, but I want this breakpoint to meet only when the value of B is 20. So to add a conditional breakpoint over here right click click on add conditional breakpoint and I am adding a condition B is greater than 20. Now this breakpoint should match only when the B is greater than 20. Right now what I am passing here is 20 only. So let me pass 10, 20, 30 and save it and refresh. So right now 10, 20, 30 is passed because the condition is not matched. It didn't break here. The breakpoint is not matched and directly it breaked here. But instead of 10, 20, 30, if I would have passed 10, 30, 30, save it, close it and refresh. Now you see it stopped here. The breakpoint is matching because the condition is matching now. So with conditional breakpoint, it completely depends what you are passing and whether the condition is matching according to the value or not. Only then it will break there. Otherwise it won't. Now debugging asynchronous codes. Now we have learned a few videos back about asynchronous JavaScript. If you haven't watched that video, you can go and click on the top right corner and see that specific video. But with asynchronous codes, we have certain challenges. Like in asynchronous codes, we work with promises, async await and callbacks, which makes the code quite complicated and hence makes the debugging also complicated. So what's the solution over there? You should set breakpoints directly in async code or use debugger inside the async function. That's the one of the way we can easily debug the asynchronous code. Debugging with promises. So if we are working with promises that time, you know, you are having a dot catch. So use dot catch to log errors or use breakpoints within dot then or dot catch. You can use breakpoints over there either in dot then or in dot catch so that it can stop in those situations whether the promise has been resolved or rejected. Monitoring network requests. Now network requests, I showed you the network panel over there. So we have a network panel in dev tools to monitor API requests made by LWC and from LWC we are going to make a lot of API requests. Hence in those situations network panels are basically used. So we can inspect the responses coming from there like what sort of status code is coming from the response. What is the response time? What's the data that is coming from there? So network panel is basically handy in those situations. It is used to ensure our component is receiving the expected data from the server. And the practical example is to track a request in LWC to troubleshoot data loading issues. So suppose in LWC, whenever you are facing a data loading issue specifically with a third party APIs, network panel will be the first place you can look forward to. Now common debugging scenarios in LWC. There can be scenarios of undefined or null values. So we know when we don't define anything to any variable, we have undefined or null over there. So in that situation, it's better to use console logs or debugger to check out the data. In case of API errors, we should take help of network panels, know about the network issues and invalid responses. For event handling issues, we can debug event listeners and check event data. Now some tips for efficient debugging. Use console logs strategically, so place console logs only where it is necessary. Always check the console first. Sometimes you need not to even use the console log. Your console itself is telling you about some of the common errors and exceptions. So first check the console itself. If you are knowing the exception and error, resolve it. Otherwise, start logging. Test edge cases, so test for null, undefined, empty arrays. So these are called as edge cases. So always test for these edge cases first and then start proceeding with the work. And always document your findings. So whatsoever you found after debugging, start documenting about it. This will keep a track about the complex issues and also their solutions. Now guys, that marks the end of this session. See you soon in the next session. Till then, thank you and take care.